Welcome back to Omni Factory. Today we're going to be getting into Ender Pearls. Yes, Ender Pearls in a number of different ways. Uh, first of all, I just put another simulation chamber out here because we're going to be building a new line out here. I may have to move that um, fairly soon, but for now we have it. But it doesn't have anything in it yet. And we are going to need a data model, so we're going to need to go and craft one of those. However, in order to get Ender Pearls going, you need a different kind of data model. You need to get uh, an Enderman data model, as you might imagine. And uh, then you have an option to basically redeem the stuff you get out of the pristine matter that pops out of here eventually. And you can redeem it back for, um, well, some other bits and pieces. So let's take a look at that first of all. While we're actually doing that, I'm going to get the system to create us some stuff. And that is going to be uh, casings. I'm going to get to create a few of these. So let's just tell it to make six. OK. And we, I need to craft the, the holes manually over there, but uh, it's going to actually just get some more wrought iron, convert that over and get those up and running. I don't know whether we need six. We probably may need more by, that, by the time we actually get through this. But for the meantime, that will do. We're also going to need to do one of the other quests. Oh, that's actually full. 8,000. No wonder I couldn't get it out of my inventory. OK, I need to make a trash can at some point. Regardless, um, where was I? Overworldian matter. Yes, we're going to need to upgrade that into the next tier and the next tier above that. See, we've already got the hellish matter. Well, we need to upgrade it again into extraterrestrial matter. Now, if we shift click that in, you'll see that we are so much sure. Well, if I go over on this side, end of hole, you see, we don't have any. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem, given that we're going to need at least seven uh, extraterrestrial matter. So I've got seven diamonds. I wish went out and mined them. And if we combine that with uh, we're going to need to combine um, pulsating dust and pulsating dust combines with diamonds to make ender pearls. So we need seven of that. Whoops. There we go. I need to put them both in the alloy smelter. I did make one, but we're probably going to need that for something else. So we'll have those made up and turned into ender pearls. Now, let's take a look at the next step. We then need that. Um, oh, what they call models, aren't they? So they, we need the model. And there's a bunch of different kinds of which the one we're actually looking for is the Enderman. Um, we're going to be one of you. Enderman data model. There we go. Needs Ender Pearl. Remember, I said we need an Ender Pearl for something else. Yep. So we're going to need all this extraterrestrial matter, an Ender Pearl and a blank data model. And we've got probably uh, oh, I need to go and craft a blank data model. One second. Let me do that first. OK, so I've made the Enderman data model. Let's just get some clay to get started. And let's just request all 16 of that. OK, and we're going to want to require. Well, we can just grab it from here, actually. We're just going to get another 16. Is it 16 or is it? Yeah, it's one of each in the alloy smelter. Good. Of pulsating dust. Let's get that going as well. Both of those can go in. That's going to start producing polymer clay. And that's what we're going to be want to be doing in our end result anyway, because the end result of this whole chain that we're going to be building is feeding polymer clay from an alloy smelter directly into a simulation chamber. Out of that simulation chamber is going to come what we need. So let's just take the Enderman, Enderman data model and take a look. This takes polymer clay, produces extraterrestrial matter. Good, I guess. Um, but that, in turn, we also want this pristine Enderman matter. This stuff we can use for other stuff. Um, let's see, what else can we actually use this for? With the Realm, realm Gate, I don't think we're ready for that just yet. Uh, we can combine it with emeralds and rice and snowballs to get ender pearls back. That's that's one option. Um, and emeralds we can mine. Can we actually make emeralds? Well, we can also get those out of another loop fabricator for, again, pristine ender matter. Uh, ender matter. So that's one option. We still need the other two things. Uh, rice slime balls. You can grow rice. And snowballs, of course, we should be able to uh, yeah, get a glacial precipitate from thermal expansion or fluid solidify with just some water and we can make snowballs. So with that, we can make ender pearls uh, as and when we wish. OK. Now, uh, just stepping back for a second, we know that we need clay and pulsating dust for this. Pulsating dust we can get from uraninite, but that's not particularly great. However, we can also get it from ender pearl dust in an electrolyzer. Enderpearl dust, as you might imagine uh, by itself, is pulverized enderpearls. So if we get enderpearls from this thing, we can pulverize them. So one to one, and then one to pulsating dust. 
So every ender pool that we get out of this, we'll be able to produce another four port polymer clay, if we can also get the clay. So the clay, on the other hand, that needs us to get the various um, sort of basic stuff going. It needs to get cobble, cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, sand to dust, etc., etc. And that is something we can do through pulverizers. So one into the next, into the next, into the next, etc. And of course, power. So it seems like uh, we can do everything except the last stage. The last stage, we're going to need to go to a chemical reactor. So we're going to need to go from cobble to gravel. So that's one pulverizer. Gravel to sand, that's two pulverizers. Uh, sand to dust is going to be the third pulverizer, I assume. Uh, how are we going to get to the dust block? Yep, so three pulverizers, okay. And then finally, the dust block means a chemical reactor. And we've got one outside that we can sort of reuse temporarily, but we, we do need another one. So uh, we may as well just make one. So three pulverizers, a chemical reactor, and we'll get clay. So that's one thing, one of the reasons why I asked this thing to make me casings. And also to make, while we're at it, um, the LV machine casing, uh, sorry, the wrought iron plate, and then we need some copper cable, uh, of which we can put them in here. I thought that was the actual recipe. Is it not? Am I misremembering? LV machine hole? Hole? Uh, tin cable. Ugh. Okay, close enough. <laughs> tin cable, do we have any? Tin cable, well, we don't have a great amount. Let's just, um, well, yeah, we don't have quite enough. Let's just request it, pop it in there, and we got three machine holes at least. That was enough to get us to pull risers. And I'm not going to go to medium voltage with this, at least not for the moment. And we can always go to that later. Uh, not the universal pulverizer, no, it's a macerator. It's a pulverization process, but a macerator. That's going to need a few bits and pieces. The, the circuits are actually probably the easiest things to get these days. Uh, still, I've not got these in auto crafting mode. There's still lots of subcomponents, but machine holes, tin cables, you get the idea. I'm going to craft those off camera. Still did take a few bits of pistons to actually craft, so I think I'm going to be adding those to the auto crafting system. Anyway, we've got all of those available, and we only need three of those holes, not six. So three basic macerators should get us started. And we're also going to need a cobble generator. Now, if you get together some steel, you can put some steel plates together with a water bucket and a lava bucket and get a cobblestone generator. We're going to want some cable, and we'll just then go and set this up outside. Now, we're going to want to set this up in reverse, I think, because uh, I'm going to give this a go and see if we can get this going with... Let's just get rid of that for a second. See if we can get this going with uh, the Greg Tech power system and uh, the Greg Tech uh, output. For that, we're going to need a wrench, I think. Let's just give this a go. And let's see, I normally end up using Ender.io because I never end up figuring this system out. If anyone knows I'm doing wrong, if you see anything uh, upcoming very shortly, then do let me know. Where's my uh, wrench? There we go. Okay, so let's put these down. Uh, so finally, what we're going to want to end up with is just a box of some kind. Why don't we just see if we can put a draw down or something like that. I should have a, a basic draw. Yeah, let's get one of, the, one of those. There we go. And we'll just go and put that down at the end. Uh, in front of that, we're going to need, let's see, we need space for three. So uh, if that goes down there, then we would have room for one, two, three. Yeah, it should be more than enough. So there. And then we want to set the output of this to the other side, clicking that. Okay. Same thing with this one. Output to the other side. And same thing with this one. Output to the other side. We'll then turn on auto output in each one of them. <laughs> and this is where it all goes wrong. And why don't we just uh, test this by all this extra cobble that I've uh, created? Oh, no, wait a second. That is actually working. Good. <laughs> For a change, it's actually working. Good. So I've just got this buffer box here. I'm not even sure whether we need the buffer box, to be perfectly honest, but we have a buffer box available for the dust blocks. Um, can we actually just convert the dust blocks straight into clay? Because it's just an electrolyzer, isn't it? So dust block and output is the chemical reactor. Sorry, not the everything else. So we need a chemical reactor. Is that easy to make? It's going to need more motors, but everything else is tin. 
I think I'm going to need to go and buy more tin. However, we'll leave it alone for now. That's going to convert the whole stack across. And before we even get there, what we're probably going to need to do... Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, what we need to do is feed in the infinite, um, not the infinite water, cobblestone generator. Now, if this just automatically outputs like the infinite water, maybe it will just output straight into that. It will. OK. All right. So that's effortless. <laughs> well, by comparison to my usual solutions anyway. So that's going to get that's going to keep queuing up dust blocks for us. And uh, you, by the time I come back to it, maybe that will actually do uh, quite a bit for us to be able to convert over into clay. OK, so now I just need to craft a chemical reactor. There we go, there's a recipe for one chemical reactor. Yeah, basic version. And I think I'm going to get rid of that box of clay dust. I don't think I actually need it at all. And it already generated 400 before I actually came back out here, so I turned off the cobble generator. Well, got rid of it anyway. So we're going to get rid of that, and that's going to explode all over the place, but uh, I don't care that much just yet. And uh, we're just going to put in the basic chemical reactor, which should start filling. Yep, it's filling just fine. And this time we're going to want to have this auto output to this side. So let's output you and let's set you to auto output. Good. And then we can put the box back, I think. Yeah, because that's going to make a box for well, uh, let's put the box back. Let's put it somewhere appropriate. Let's just get this sorted. I need to put the block down to actually face it against. It's one of those, yeah, it's one of those weird things. Let's get rid of you and you. There we go. There's the box. Okay, and we'll just basically feed this in. Then we also want an infinite water source. And then we should be able to just dump that on top of our chemical reactor, I think. It should output to one side, whichever side is closest. It shouldn't need any sort of help doing that. And there we go. And hopefully this is going to start converting, although it, oh, is this, oh, is this going to be a medium voltage recipe? Because if that's so, I'm going to have problems. Uh, clay, and uh, let's take a look. So clay in a chemical reactor. No, it's not medium voltage. Maybe it only allows for one of those blocks to be filled. Or no, in fact, it may just need a bucket. Yeah, it's going to be quite slow because it's going to wait for a bucket. So that should then output this way once everything is said and done. Uh, I am maybe going to want to um, feed this manually for now because I'll at least put another chest down somewhere with all this extra dust um, that we didn't need here. Let me just put it in my AE system for the now for the moment because everything should be automatically generated. And let's get that going. How much do I have space left for? Eh, nearly full, but uh, it's mostly got just random blocks. Okay. So that now, once it starts to... Oh, there we go. There's our first piece of clay. Good. And it's working fine. That's a bit slow. The infinite water source. There is probably um, a an upgraded version. Yes, there is. And it's probably going to involve crafting, yeah, the previous tier. This works for the cobblestone generators as well. If you make eight of the previous tier, you can combine them into an upgraded version. And the same thing is true here. It just takes an awful lot of raw time, plates and full buckets of water. Um, but I'm not too concerned about it just yet. That can just generate it in the background. And to make sure that happens, uh, I think all I have to do is put this cobblestone generator back down and everything will back stuff, uh, but we'll end up with a stack of each of these things once it does back stuff. So I can always just grab some sand or gravel whenever I need it. There we go. Has this thing uh, chewed its way through things yet? It has system energy levels critical like that. Probably means. Oh no, it is charging. Okay. Interesting. Why didn't you charge before? Have you run out of energy down here? Have we got some problems? Um, that is. No, that's full. So do we have. That's depleting. So these should be running at full power. They are. So clearly, they, maybe the machines were running at full speed outside. It's taking all the actual power out of this system. We can always add more to this later. And in fact, I think a commenter did say you can also run an alternative version of these. Is it new, mis new uh, I always never remember how you actually write this. New, numismatic dynamo. Okay. And you can make that um, uh, basically, yeah, it, you can use that to generate power as well. I need to go and investigate those a little bit first because I haven't used them before as to what items you can put in them. It could even be something like ender pearls. I can never remember. Anyway, 
So we have this generating our extraterrestrial matter. Did we get the quest complete for that? Uh, yes, we did. So good. That will get us five on new pennies. And extraterrestrial mobs. So we can see we've got the Enderman data model. We haven't got those other three data models as yet, but um, that will come with time, no doubt. And of course, the Blaze data model and the others, we haven't gone for those either. We've just gone for the common ones. And uh, that is... Yeah, that's that's ramping up. That's fine. Okay, so we still haven't got any pristine, but it does take a while to level up. It's still in the basic tier, unfortunately. So we need to go. Uh, we well, need to let it kill, or rather, convert twenty-three more of that polymer clay before it'll actually go to the next tier. Ideally, we want self-aware tier, which is hugely endgame. <laughs> well, hugely a few hours of that thing. We're actually running through things. So let's go back to the polymer clay again. And we now have automatic clay. So that's one of the two steps taken care of for us. We can then perhaps just craft an alloy smelter and put it out here along the same line over there. Um, we can feed the stuff in. We probably need a one piece of Ender IO conduit around the back or something like that, because we can't auto input, I don't think, for alloy smelters. So that leaves pulsating dust, which means we need to go and get the chain done to basically craft this up. So let me just take a look at uh, the various options in here and see if there's any more efficient way to get what we need. Ender pearl dust into pulsating dust, but not yet. If you have a look at how much power it requires, that's well beyond medium voltage. So we can't just directly go between those two. So you might think, well, well, that's that, you know, well, basically unable to be produced, except that we can, however, make resonant clathrate. Now that does just take a smelter to turn into pulsating dust. However, this takes a couple of other things. We need another chemical reactor. Joy, I need to craft more of those. Uh, but if we get resonant ender in the chemical reactor, we can turn nether quartz into resonant clathrate. Nether quartz, as you may or may not know, is something you can smelt uh, up or convert over in an electrolyzer using a small amount of EU partic from glass. And of course, glass comes from sand, sand comes from gravel, gravel comes from cobble. <laughs> you get the idea. Either we can pull it out of this same machine, or we can create in a separate line to be producing glass as well as clay. Uh, mainly, like, leave that till the next episode. Not quite sure how much more materials I have. Regardless, the resonant ender, we can just get straight from ender pearls. So it's one ender pearl to one quarter of a bucket and one quarter of a bucket turns into one resonant clathrate which we can then smelt up to turn into one pulsating dust combine that in a alloy smelter to get well <laughs> you could get back to ender pearls with an addition of a diamond but that's not exactly what we actually want uh, we want this recipe to get to four polymer clay okay polymer clay is going to go around and we're going to be getting more and more stuff. So yes, remember that we're going to be using that to get the overworld, uh, not the overworld matter, the extraterrestrial matter. That's going to kick everything else off. We can directly get back to ender pearls with other stuff, or we can combine it in other ways. And the main thing that we actually want is not so much having to use that uh, extraterrestrial matter, is just this. We want pristine enderman matter, and we want basically this to convert one into six. And we want, it for every one of those polymer clay, remember, for each ender pearl that we're going to get, we're going to get four polymer clay. So we need, in four chances, we, we, we'd like to be able to, to get this converted over into pristine ender matter to get us to six ender pearls per pristine. The ender pearls will then go around, convert it into more polymer clay. So everything should loop and become a net positive but we need to craft a few more things. So we're going to need a separate chain for glass, or rather, not even glass. It's almost like we need to get to this point for glass, but then also um, mainly the nether quartz. And nether quartz is useful to us anyway. We're going to need it for lots of other things, so we may as well produce that. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this just yet, so let me just get rid of that uh, torch for a second. And let me just put down some, no, oh, not energetic alloy cable. That's not going to be good. Um, we're going to want to just feed this over here, just so we've got things going. And we'll just put our torches back in front or something like that, so we don't have any creepers or anything else spawning. Good, nothing popping up. 
Good. So we can work from this end and do pretty much exactly the same thing as we did before. That's going to need a lot more machines crafting, unfortunately. This is the one that produces sand. It's the second one in the chain. And let's see if we can get away with just using Ender IO item conduits. Uh, they do have a round robin mode. So if we can get the round robin mode working, uh, we can get them basically to uh, to deal with that. So let's just take a look. Do I have any item conduits? Uh, I do. I have 11. So let's just take all of them, please. Give me all 11. Good. And let's just get rid of those uh, pennies. We need to convert them. In fact, let's just convert them back over now. Just convert them up into the nickel form. They are far more useful like that. There we go. Uh, they're just useful iron ore and copper ore and stuff like that. So we don't have a problem. All right, and then we'll just grab out of the back of this, and I need to go and perhaps put a block down or two, get this going in that way. Uh, so it's the middle one, remember? So we need to just put in some item conduit into the back. Okay, and we're going to pull from that, and we're going to head that way, and then maybe just grab the stuff from there. So we're going to want to be converting. Next step is to go into glass, and then glass into... Um, Nether quartz. So glass is just going to be. Well, let's just take a look. Um, sand into glass is going to be a furnace of some kind. So do we have? I don't think we have an electric furnace just yet. I should have, but I don't. Is there a Greg Tech electric furnace? Yes, there is. Greg Tech, and it's not too hard to make either. It's probably going to be slower than we we're expecting, but you know that 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 will do. So let's just put this down here. And let's just, just leave it alone for now. This is going to just be a different color if we do extract anything from here. So that will have that set to that. And none of these is going to need any sort of connection. So let's assume there is going to be our furnace. So that's, that's going to just inject into here. And ooh, in fact, no, I do need one here. Where's my Yeta wrench? Yeah, Yeta wrench insert because this is going to be the one that it's going to be round trip to. It's going to round robin to. Do we do that? Round robin enabled. Yep. So on the green channel, it's going to try and insert sand into here. Once it's able to pull it out from here. And right now it isn't. Um, has that got auto output enabled? No, nope, that one has. I'm not sure why it's not. In, oh, maybe it needs to be set. Yeah, don't worry. I'll figure it out later. Regardless, over here. So we needed a furnace. And then from the furnace, what is, what is it for the nether quartz again? Nether quartz. And that's going to be a chemical reactor, maybe, or an electrolyzer. Electrolyzer, and it's still LV tier, so we are perfectly fine. So one electrolyzer, one furnace coming up. Bonus points if you spotted that I hadn't enabled the output on this, so it couldn't ever really distribute by round robin out to anything else, because it just wasn't turned on. So it was it is now distributing. Uh, however... Um, do we have everything we need? Do we have an input connected? Let's just turn off extract for now. Insert on green. And I think we should just be able to keep up with this. So let's just turn Robin round Robin off. So it's extracting always active on green. Inserting there. Inserting there. And are you now... <laughs> uh, prove me wrong. So maybe this is sided. I hope I hoped it wouldn't be, but maybe it is. Let's just pop this down. And are you actually sided? Let's take you at inserting. Yes, you're sided. Okay, fine. So we do have to insert through the top. That's a shame. Or at least maybe that's because the output set to the back. Why would the output be set to the back? Let's just change, change that and see if we can actually get this working. So output on this side. And there is a creeper, by the way. And it's just down there. It was annoying me. Uh, there he is. Yeah, I'm going to avoid that guy. <laughs> Let's. Oh, go away. Go away. Do not blow up this whole setup. One second, I need to get rid of that guy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Don't. Don't. I've been enclosing the underground area, by the way. It's just taking a while. <laughs> I need to actually build a whole new building out here as well. Any ideas? Do let me know. Uh, otherwise, I need to go and just go all the way along here again. Uh, there we go. Right. Where was I? Uh, yeah, I think everything was working, but uh, let's just see whether we can actually insert stuff onto the back now on this node. Insert. Will that then go in here if I just take this off? Um, are you going to take any more? Nope. Oh, hang on. Um, insert. Uh, is that working? 
Are you gonna? Yes, it is working. Good. It's not sided. It just had an input set to the back. I'm not sure why that was a default. Regardless, uh, the output is going to be to the left, and that is going to set to auto. So glass will be output this way. One more machine to craft. Here we go. Electrolyzer. That's going to turn that into, hopefully, quartz. Good. So the quartz is where we're going to need it. So then <laughs> that's then going to be needed in the next machine across. So the nether quartz. And uh, the quartz, and let's just look at that. That's going to be in our, not the fluid extractor, the chemical reactor, I would imagine. Yes, chemical reactor. So that's another machine to make, along with resident ender. Now, that, that's where it brings this sort of to an end. As, no pun intended. Um, that's going to bring us to the point. So we're probably going to want to just buffer the nether quartz. I'm going to want to, to make that, well, a fair amount of it. So we may as well just play another draw and have that available whenever we want. And that's going to just be quite useful for us. There we go. And let's get that sorted. So we need to just put this back. Maybe may mean we need to put in more different uh, color um, channels, but it's not, not that much of an issue. And there we go. Are you going to output now? Did I set this up? Um, yeah isn't outputting, auto outputting. There we go. Ah, okay. Clay, nether quartz. Easy. It's consuming the power, but hopefully we have enough infinite power. Well, in enough infinite power. Hopefully the power is infinite enough for us to not have cause a problem or a, b a bountiful enough. That was the name of the recent update. Anyway, nether quartz, we need to get one more machine then. Oh, it's going to be one more machine. For the whole of this thing, I'm actually out of machines. Remember when I said we need six machines before? Well, no, we're going to need more. So we're going to need that nether quartz uh, in the chemical reactor or whatever it was. Uh, nether quartz, uh, let's just grab you, chemical reactor. And then from that, we're going to need to then convert this over. And that's just in a smelter. So without using a regular furnace and fuel, that does mean a second machine. So that's eight machines needed to craft just for this episode so far. And then from that, we'll be able to then take that into a ninth machine. And well, yeah, um, it is the chemical reactor, is it? Nope. Hang on. Uh, we need to just convert this somewhere. I've lost the recipe. Where is the recipe? I need to convert that across. One second. No, it's fine. Just the chemical reactor. And then from there, you can just smelt it directly. Again in the smelter, so that's nine machines, I think, um, whatever we're up to now. And from there, you can combine it directly in the tenth machine, which is the alloy smelter, uh, which then converts into, end, well, no, not that one, um, into, there we go. We take 24 EU per tick, convert it with the, the clay, and we get pulsating polymer clay out. However, for all of that to really work, we actually need the supply of ender pearls. Now this has, has started, so we can just grab that first pristine enderman matter and we can just put it into our whoop, put it into our loop fabricator and then decide what we want out of this. We want six ender pearls. And we'll have another one of these loop fabricators just set to produce ender pearls on its own. And there was one more machine that I actually forgot. It's the basic fluid extractor. I'm going to borrow this one from here and craft another one, you know, between the episodes or something. Uh, this is just used to change the ender pearls into a resonant ender, which gets fed into the basic chemical reactor. So let's put that there. And I may need to just actually take some of this back up again. Uh, let's just take you up, because I want to make sure that the output of this is directly going this way. So that can go back down into the chemical reactor. And we can set auto output on this, and that should be that. So that's going to convert into resin ender. Yep. And that should feed into here once we have some kind of input. Either way, I'll figure it out. And on this side, we're going to want to basically take in from here is going to need to get converted. Let's just uh, rework this a little bit. Here's where things go a little bit awry. We need to get medium voltage uh, chemical reactor, not a low voltage one. So you're going to have to go away. So we have one spare. That is not a valid recipe. So we can extract the fluid. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we, we may want to craft an, a, a basically an advanced fluid extractor just to go on the medium voltage up there. So we're going to need to feed the stuff for we get from this point, the nether quartz, 
out and into our medium voltage setup and maybe we should build another floor above here so it's on the medium voltage stuff up there but out here maybe we'll do this next episode uh, but from here it, it's straightforward we just basically extract this fluid somewhere we could even use this one in fact it's probably a little bit safer like well, not safer but it's probably a little bit more power efficient to just get it out here it should be quite easy and then we're going to feed it into the alloy smelter uh, sorry the chemical reactor with the um the quartz so they're both ready here we just ship them that way uh, wherever we decide to put this. I'll decide where I'll put it next episode. And then from there, it's fairly normal from that point onwards. Or you just take this. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh, that's going to get this. We put, put it into a smelter. That can be any smelter. So I've got one right here. And then following that, we just have an alloy smelter. And that is, again, low voltage. So we can get it right here. So what we need to do is ship this out to a separate medium voltage line and back and that's pretty much the whole thing done at which point we'll start to generate pulsating polymer clay so uh i'm not sure if i have a chemical reactor at the moment just to demonstrate this do i uh, let's just take a stack of you let's see if i've got a chemical reactor upstairs if i don't then i'll show you at the start of next episode but we pretty much have automated the whole of polymer clay this episode and if we're able to do that uh electrolyzer no we don't we need to craft one so we automated the whole of polymer clay all we need to then do is once it comes out at the end of this alloy smelter, we'll just drop it uh, out here into a box or something like that, and then straight into this simulation chamber that I'll move. I need to craft more um, more conduit from Ender.io, but we'll just move it further across, and then we'll also move the loop fabricator around. You can see I've already got a number of Ender pearls already, and uh, we actually got three more while I was actually preparing everything else. Uh, there's a fourth one. So we've got plenty of ender pearls to be able to do this. We just need to ship it into a medium voltage tier to finish off. But otherwise, the whole tier is done. So we need one medium voltage machine. And then one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine machines, one medium voltage machine, and that's enough. So I'm going to be building out uh, probably another tier another story out here and going with that way. And we can bring the medium voltage cable out of that wall or something along those kind of lines. Hope you'll join me for the next episode just to see the, the sort of completion of that. But <laughs> this will then generate, essentially should generate more ender pearls than we actually use. At which point we can use the ender pearls for other things. And uh, well, I guess we can just double check. Do they actually get burned up? Can we use them for power in any way? And the answer is sort of. According to a commenter, you can actually use the prismarine crystals, which are slightly different, but they're also from pristine garden, guardian matter, um, which is also generated from the same thing, the pulsating polymer clay. So we just need to create the guardian data model, which is prismarine, which is stuff we've already got available, and a blank data model and some of the overworldian matter. That will generate more, more overworldian matter, but also the pristine guardian matter, which will generate prismarine crystals, which we should be able to use to basically power things using that numismatic, uh, the numismatic generator. So because we've just automated the whole of polymer clay, we can feed it into whatever we like from that point. We can feed it into this, gets us ender pearls. Of course, we can use that to feed the same reaction. It's the only thing that doesn't come straight from cobble. So everything is nice there. And then any excess that we get, any extra polymer clay, we can just feed into other simulation chambers to get us other different stuff loot, uh, other different stuff from our loot fabricators. So yeah, uh, things like glowstone, redstone, everything else I mentioned previously, as long as we have enough um, polymer clay coming out of this thing, we should be set to go on for resource generation, which means I need to mine less. Uh, always a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have, give it a big thumbs up because this will probably help you or you guys who are obviously sick of mining. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode. Feel free to click on the bell if you want notifications of when that's available. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel or share it with other people as you normally would. But more importantly than everything else, put comments down below for, um, for everything else that you've heard. And just to briefly mention a couple of people, uh, I should also mention that uh, Jacob Smith mentioned about the numismatic generator and uh, also about the, uh, yeah, the Enderman simulation model. So thanks very much to you for mentioning it. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode. As always, thanks for watching.